in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 14th of august wednesday of the 19th week in ordinary time today we celebrate the memorial of saint maximilian kolbe who is he he is the patron saint of the prison ministry india you know the catholic church has a mission of visiting the sick visiting the prisoners and attending to their needs here in mangalore in the diocese of mangalore this ministry is being done under the leadership of carmelites we do that there are many other religious and many lay people they have their family they have their children they have their work but still they make time they sacrifice their resources and visit the jails every week they give them counseling they conduct some programs there and then they give legal aid to the innocent for their release and also they visit their families and attend to their spiritual and material needs and this maximilian kolbe is their patron so today let's remember all those who are involved in this ministry prison ministry india there are around 7000 volunteers all over india yesterday in mangalore we had the silver jubilee of the mangalore unit of prison ministry india now let's pay attention to the gospel text of the day a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 20 at that time jesus said to his disciples if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he listens to you you have gained your brother but if he does not listen take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and if he refuses to listen even to the church let him be to you as a gentile and a tax collector truly i say to you whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say to you if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name there i am among them the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ let's face it we all fall into sin we all hurt each other it's just a fact of life in our fallen world nobody knows this better than jesus that's because nobody has been more sinned against than he was all his life he knew what it felt like to be betrayed spoken against hurt and scorned 
So when he gives his disciples guidance on how to deal with the brother or sister who has sinned against them, he isn't just speaking divine wisdom. He is also speaking out of his own human experience. That's probably why he told his disciples to try to be as patient as possible. When dealing with someone who has sinned against them or has done something wrong, rather than immediately condemning the person and cutting off all ties, Jesus wants each of us to imitate him, the one who is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. If we can try first to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with that person, we might be able to win them back. And if that doesn't work, we shouldn't give up. Rather, we can find support from other brothers and sisters who can help us speak the truth in love. It's only after these attempts at reconciliation have failed that Jesus tells us to take the final step of placing some distance between ourselves and the other person. But again, this is not so that we can judge and condemn them. He is the only one who can judge and even he did not come to condemn. Instead, that distance can diffuse attention and help us to focus on interceding for that person. It can also help us create space in our own hearts for God's mercy to heal us of any wounds or bitterness that might have crept in. Sin is a very destructive force. Its effects can fester and linger long after any one sin has been committed. That's why Jesus has given us this teaching. He doesn't want anyone to remain tapped by its power. So he promises to be with us as we try to address sin with one another. He promises always to help us as we seek to lose one another from this trap. Jesus, help me to be an ambassador of your reconciliation. Amen. The hymn of praise flowing out of the psalm today is another universal declaration that all people are to give glory to God. In relationship to the other readings, it reminds us that God will ultimately receive glory from the joy and salvation of the faithful and from the punishment of the unfaithful. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response, the glory of the Lord is above the heaven. The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore. The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who lowers himself to look down upon heaven and earth? The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, 
Remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Father Frank Sharma Carmelite, Annie D'Souza from Kuwait, Lancy Giovanni from Mumbai, Lenisha Fiona Pereira from Gurupur. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. Krista and Joe Maini from Las Vegas, US are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Congratulations dear friends. May God bless your family life. That's all for today my dear friends. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.